we believe that we're the heart of the country. The country's having a heart attack right now, and it's, at some point we need to address that. This is the Del Mar Divide a street many in St. Louis consider a symbolic boundary of racial division that has existed for decades. As the city continues to protest the not guilty verdict of former officer Jason Stockley and the 2011 shooting death of Anthony Lamar Smith, the Del Mar Divide looms in the back of everyone's minds. There's still rumors that you shouldn't go north of Del Mar, like you shouldn't drive. They tell new white people to the city that you shouldn't drive north of Del Mar or don't go to North City, like it's too dangerous up there. Which is stupid, because like it's just people, but um, that's still the narrative that people get when they move here. Protesters have promised 100 days of unrest in the city, and one of the areas they've chosen to march in is right on Del Mar. The racial divide here is a, a hangover from the history that we have. Like, I think a lot of people don't think about context when we think about a protest. So like, it seems like this popped out of nowhere, right? Like, but Dred Scott was, uh, the Dred Scott case was decided here and people, black people were sold on the steps of the courthouse that we walked by down on the Arch Riverfront and like people are, tourists come in and like walk by that every day. Delmar Boulevard stretches for nine miles near the boundary of St. Louis proper and University City, a suburb. The changes in landscape when crossing Delmar are drastic. People in St. Louis have been taught that north of Delmar means poor and south of Delmar means rich. You're seeing Whole Foods and all the like strobs, like high-end groceries, uh, grocery stores in the Central Ascend. And then north of Del Mar, you have like White Castle and Aldi um, and kind of like discount markets and like check cashing places. Uh, there's ch Church's Chicken up this way. The businesses that are basically there more to take money from people but not really give people uh, a living wage to work in, in their neighborhood. The Del Mar Divide is just one of many byproducts of the city's racial past. It was a term popularized by a 2012 BBC documentary and is often referenced when St. Louis residents talk about racial segregation. We all live in food deserts. You know, you can get nothing but chicken wings, fried fish, gyros, and loaded potatoes. That's not, how is that healthy? There's nowhere around here for us to walk and go get food. So what do we do? You know, we're at the mercy of somebody who really doesn't care about us. You see the Del Mar Divide and you see a lack of funds in primarily black areas and it's like, what's going on? How come we can't have black communities that are completely vibrant and prosperous and have money and actually have representation in the community? Here you can just look in the skyline, you got tons of cranes. You look on our side of Del Mar, all you see is pain. Officially sanctioned segregation in St. Louis can be traced back over a hundred years. In 1916, voters overwhelmingly enacted a measure making it illegal for a person of one particular race to move into a neighborhood occupied by more than 75% of another race. The law was overturned a year later, but St. Louis remained racially divided due to existing housing associations that were pro-segregation. With support from the City Real Estate Board, these housing associations forced white property owners to sign covenants, forbidding the resale of their homes to non-whites for periods of up to 50 years. This practice was one of many so-called restrictive covenants enacted all over the U.S. during the same time period. Meanwhile, another widespread practice known as redlining also helped reinforce segregation. Red boundary lines were literally drawn on maps by mortgage lenders, insurance companies, and the like, labeling African-American neighborhoods as risky investments or even dangerous. Redlining effectively corralled black families into specific neighborhoods, while whites could live everywhere else. Welfare associations would write letters to residents saying things like, a colored resident in your immediate neighborhood destroys the value of your property immeasurably. 
While perhaps you have not been affected by this class of people coming into this neighborhood, you surely want protection against this growing danger, which is more menacing than fire or the elements. It would take a 1948 Supreme Court decision to overturn the enforcement of racist covenant clauses, but the damage had been done. Decades of state-sanctioned segregation left St. Louis racially divided in ways that still hold true today. If you went over the line, one, there could be punishment through like law enforcement and things like that, or just vigilante violence, but also uh, people would leave the neighborhood if you crossed that line. Um, and then that, you know, uh, started white flight and things like that. If we look at one zip code just north of Del Mar Boulevard, over 95% of the residents are black, while the neighborhood just south of it is only 33% black. The homes on both sides of Del Mar also tell their own story. Average home values just north of Del Mar come in at over $65,000, whereas the average home values south of Del Mar skyrocket to $269,000. And some of these properties are just a few blocks away from each other. What the city of St. Louis, whether it's the police or the government, they respect those that spend money. As you, since you all been around, you haven't seen any police ride around. Now let's go on the other side of Del Mar. They watching everything. You got Forest Park, the number one park in America. They're going to have to do something. They're going to have to do some major things. Del Mar Boulevard represents what minorities have had to struggle with for decades in St. Louis and how that haunting past has yet to go away. And the line is still basically there. Not a lot of mobility has happened, so we still basically have segregated a segregated city. Ultimately, we want to be an example for other cities to get it right. Now, we're not getting it right just yet, but uh, I, I think we're trying to push for that. We believe that we're the heart of the country. The country's having a heart attack right now, and at, at some point we need to address that.